Over here? This way? No? 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 Over here? Right here? Right there. Ah. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to some Space Engineers. Tortwing, you're in the way. Tortwing. Uh. Woohoo! All right, anyway, enough of that. Welcome back, everybody. And we're apparently still in Tortwing's camera lift. So I did end up putting some cameras and... Quite frankly, remoting without the camera was just, unless he's in direct sight of me, wasn't very useful. So, we got three cameras. One is his center one, that's above the cockpit. And then we have camera left, camera right, camera left. At first I actually only had camera left, camera right. And although that worked, you could kind of line up where you wanted to weld. Hi, I'm going to weld you. No, don't do it. Okay. Oh, I was kidding. I didn't actually want to kill you. Sorry. I hit the wrong button. We're going to take care of that today. All right. So, yes. Ow. You almost killed me. Geronimo! And we die on the floor. That would have been perfect. All right. So, yeah, Dortwing has a bit more maneuverability. and We can remote into him. And we're going to do a little bit more of that today get his sensors hooked up I think I've also done some work with the girders so we'll take a look at that right now are we healed not quite so yeah I'm trying to figure out okay trying to figure out what to do with this other area and what I decided to do is mirror it basically so we have this beam here it's kind of like a y-shaped beam it's kind of it kind of goes back here and then it splits is it a Y-shaped beam? Kind of? I don't know. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I could see a Y in there if I looked hard enough. Um, so I'm trying to do the same thing on this side. We're running into issue with the walkway being in the way, but we might move the walkway. So this is where this would end up being, and I think I like it being there. At first I tried to put something on this side of the walkway, but I think that actually works out being better. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to move the walkway. So we'll probably just chop it and then drift it and then reattach it. Um, they are doing something with reflections. Before, er, it would only reflect, I think, like the skybox. Now we're getting some weird shadows. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like look here. You could see... Oh god, there we go. That's kind of a ref it's a reflection of the walkway. You can see it. You can see the green lights from the conveyor tubes. So they're working on it. It's not very pretty yet, but if it works, I mean, like looking forward, the way these work or the way they look looks pretty terrible. <laughs> it's like really pixelated. But I think I'm on. Um, I could change depending on what your video setting is too. Okay, it is on extreme. I had it on normal a while ago. I don't find it actually makes much of a difference, though, in-game. All right. So, yes, there's that. Um, so that's what I've been working on. Trying to get these beams kind of figured out. And that's what ends up happening back here. So if I keep that beam going straight ahead, it lines up and meets up back here, which isn't bad. So the whole thing has this angular look. Angular look? Ooh, joking. So that kind of works, and if this is the edge of our ship, although I think it's going to be out a bit more, uh, we have plenty of room, I think, to work around that. So I think here, I also went and I welded all this up, most of it, I think. So that's this edge, and I'm not quite sure what we're going to do here. We'll probably have, this is going to be the edge of the ship, and it's going to go just like this, out in an angle, and then up. So there probably won't be much use for this space right under here. Um, I've had some suggestions for the space under the cargoes. So I thought we could go over what kind of the plan is or what I'm thinking about for that. Most of the space is going to be occupied, I think, by more cargoes. So let's get some of those out. Um, oops. 
conveyor and there we go let's try that so we're either gonna have cargoes directly underneath and I'm not sure how far down but I think I might create a buffer so either a conveyor line between and then a cargo and then we'll probably go down again I'm not sure how far but basically I'm gonna use as much space as I can for storage that's close. It looks like this is in the way, but that could be removed. I don't think that's necessary to be on this side. So that would bring cargoes. Okay, let's do it somewhere where we're not being obstructed. And let's see how much room we have. Uh, no. Conveyor. Cargo. Is it orientated the right way? Wait, do I say that word wrong, I think? <laughs> Um, let's see, something like that, and we'll probably bring it down as much as we can for each individual section. So like this one we can't bring all the way down, because there's this stuff in the way. But um, these four we should be able to, these should be able to come straight down, and the ones on the edge we should be able to get one more row in I think. So a lot of the space under here is going to actually be for storage. And that's to account for, we're playing on the realistic setting, so our storage won't go as far as it would if we were on like three times or ten times. So we want to be able to have a decent amount of storage. And I'm actually probably going to come up a, level, a layer as well. So um, on top of here we'll probably have a row. And the reason I'm just doing the conveyor line is just... Not because it's really needed, I don't think. Oh, I know it's not needed yet, <laughs> but maybe it'll become applicable later. But I'd rather us branching in and having access via the conveyor system to each individual cargo instead of only having access to, say, this cargo because we can access it through this guy's conveyor system, his built-in one. But I kind of like the idea of having them separate as well. Also allows us more flexibility if we want to gate things physically with some connectors, which I kind of want to do. So we might just keep a gap and actually have the conveyor system come up the edge or something. And then hook into each bank of storage. And then we could gate in between this section if we wanted to. Or somewhere before it gets into that section. So instead of just isolating each individual cargo we would isolate a layer so each layer because they are connected directly to each other each layer would be like its own large cargo basically this would be another isolated cargo that we could physically isolate if we wanted to but i think the general idea for this stuff is the stuff that gets stored here is the stuff that these conveyor or these refineries are going to use so we'd sort all the ores and say this is the area for magnesium. It would store all magnesium in these cargos. Then we could isolate it from the cargo system. And then we could just let the refineries pull whatever they want from this isolated area. But there's probably already a better way of doing it with the programming and whatnot. But, um, yes. Okay. So that's that. Um, uh, we'll take a look at that maybe. And let's go ahead and look at Tortwing. So he has two sensors. And he has two programming blocks, which I'm not actually going to use right now. And the reason I did two is because I don't program. So someone mentioned you could get away with just using one by creating like a whole thing inside the one program that could execute other programs. Uh, I don't know how to do any of that. <laughs> so I see this as being more within my capability. I'm likely just going to load up a blueprint of some kind, or not a blueprint, a program of some kind that I think might be useful for Tortwing to have, and I will manually execute it. Remember changes? No, I don't want to. But, um, sensors. Okay, so Tortwing constantly murders me. So we should find a way for him not to do that. Um, let's go ahead and just see what the range is on this guy, and we could probably get the sensor to just go in that within those limits okay that should be enough I think 
I guess we could put one down as well if we really want to. But it should be the same as up. But in case I'm incompetent, which often I am. Alright, there we go. Let's get you off the ground. And let's turn your welder on. This is what we're trying to prevent. Don't murder me. Of course, we're welding, or we're trying to weld a lot of blocks, so uh, that's going to be annoying. Or it's going to take a while, but we can just look at them. Okay, so it welded up to that, and then it welded up to this. That's just a crude way of doing this, really. I could just use the sensor field and figure out when it starts to hurt me and base it off that, but I thought this might be an interesting way. I don't remember putting you there. Okay. Didn't reach here. And it did reach there. So two down, two up. Okay. So let's get into touring. Let's go into third person. Let's bring up a sensor. So we have two of them. Um, we'll call this one a welder safety. Okay, we're going to show on HUD, and now we're going to back away. <laughs> so I'm basically going to shrink this box so it's just within uh, the limits of those little those armor pieces that I put. And I think that should uh, prevent us from getting hurt, but we'll see. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll spare you that because it's going to be me jumping back and forth between this and, um, yeah. Oh. Ah, this is new. I forgot about that. I don't think we have any use for it. Okay, so we do want to detect players, however. We can set up some of this, and we're going to basically, whenever it detects a person, it's going to turn off the welders. I think that's all we're going to do. We're not going to make them turn back on. Um, we could. We could. Let's try that. Turn block on. Now we're going to try to prevent this from occurring. Because right now what this means is whenever I get out of that sensor field, it's going to turn on the welders. Uh, not really ideal. Oops. Right? So if I leave the field, will it turn back on those sensors? Or the welders, I mean? Yeah. Stop it. No. <gasps> we don't want that. Um... Because he'll end up killing me, probably. Or he'll end up welding when we don't want him to weld. So, the way we're going to get around that, I think, is if I make this, the way I normally turn on the welders, right? If I instead make another one, so Torchwing Welders, and we'll take that sensor. Where are you? Shensha? Don't make me look you up. Okay, there you are. And I put that sensor in a group. Right? So, Welders... And now the sensor's in there, so I'll just save that. And then now, when I go to activate, activate, uh, we'll do welders, toggle on and off. So that's going to turn the welders and the sensor on. So what that should mean, hmm, okay, let's see here, welders, off. So now when I go to turn it on, that's when the field will activate. And when I turn it off, there won't be a field. So if we are actively welding, it would be like that. So then if I got in it, it would turn off. And it won't turn back on. Because the sensor turned off. Oh, because I'm turning that group off. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we can fix that. So I think what we should do is do this. Tort wing. Okay. Welders. And sensor. Sensor! We'll do that. And then we still have this guy. So let's take the sensor out of there. Yoink. Right? Good. So now we have welders, and then we have one that has welders and that. Okay. Sensor. Welders. What do I want now? Okay, that's <laughs> set up action. So that I just want to turn off the welders, and that's what it's doing. Okay. Good. So now I'm going to change this again to that other group. Welders and sensors. Bam. All right. Turn on. 
Turns off, turns back on, turns off, turns back on. For not welding, it doesn't turn on because the sensor is currently off. Okay, so I think that works. So yeah, let me just adjust the field size. All right, so I think we're good. Uh, if I turn it on, it's now, I think, within that range. So I don't think it can hurt us. Ha! 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 And it might be a bit big. I could probably shrink it down even some. But I think it's good. I like that it turns back on, because chances are when we get out of him, we might still be in the, f the field. So this way, it doesn't matter. Cool. All right, our deaths from Tortwing should be fewer. All right, so we have another sensor and I already kind of set it up. So if we do that one now instead of that one, uh, it's roughly the size of the ship and it's just, I think I called it proximity. I didn't put it at the front because I don't want it to go off when we're just looking at stuff. So if we're facing something, I don't need it to go off. But if we're up close to something, I do want it to go off. So what we're going to make this thing do is using one of our sound blocks. I haven't messed with these yet, so I don't really know. Uh, which sensor are we using? Let's use the same one. Sensor left. So if we use sound block left, why not? We'll call that one proximity as well. Prox. Whoops. Definitely an X in there somewhere. Proximity. Sure. Okay. Range. We don't need the range to be very high. We just need it to affect us when we're in there. Alright, so what do we have? Alert. Okay, alert two. What, what? One, two, three, four. What are you saying? Oh, we can play some music. Lights on. Warning. Enemy detected. Complete. Objective complete. I think I like this one. In terms of a little proximity, that's probably good. Doesn't sound very loud to me, but maybe you guys can hear it. Um, like, I'm pretty sure I'm in range. Let's just boost the range. I mean, this should just affect where you can hear it from, right? Yeah, okay. Alright, so let's go back to our sensor. Sensor left, set up action. So when something enters that field, we want to... Left proximity, we want to play. And that's it. That's it. Okay, so now... Boop, 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 boop. And what we really should do is set up a timer block to repeat that. So while you're while something's inside our proximity, it keeps beeping. Uh, let's see if we can do that quickly. Okay, so excuse me, timer, timer block one. We'll call proximity. I gotta spell that word again. My fingers don't like to spell that word. All right, so this is what the sensor will turn on. So let's call it proximity sensor um, in. So that'll be what is in the field. And then I'll probably have an out of the field. But we might be able to do that with a group. So when we're in the field, we want to play that sound block. Uh, play. And then we want to basically trigger this timer block again. So can we just do start? And then we'll set this up to do two. And then I guess, hmm, when we're out of the sensor field, we could just hopefully just hit stop on this thing, and that would do it. Okay, so let's try that. So sensor, sensor left, set up action. So instead of that, we're going to do timer block one, and we'll just hit start. And then when we want it to stop, we hit stop. Does that work? Let's find out. Fly towards things. It's working. It's working. 
Okay. So, it had a little bit of a delay there because it didn't play the sound block right away. It started the timer. So let's make it less. And then we almost want to... Yeah, I guess we'd have to um, have another timer block if we want to execute that probably quicker. Like, we'd have to execute the sound block and then execute another timer block to do this little clock thing. Because by, by the time that goes off... <laughs> this is going to be so annoying. <laughs> by the time that goes off, I mean... You probably hit something. <laughs> Actually, what I can hear is the little tick of the sensor. So that's more of a, a, a clue, actually, is when that sensor goes off, I know I'm too close. I've noticed he doesn't seem to have enough power. So let's get close to the asteroids. Wow, I get a lot closer than I thought I should. I don't know. Do we like that? Maybe I should just have it for asteroid, not maybe ships. I would like it to go off immediately, though. Okay, so let's see. Um, let's try to do that. So timer block 2, we will call proximity. Proximity sensor. Um, this is going to be the new in. No, let's just call this um, stage 2. Okay. So this one will still do what it does. It's going to trigger that sound block, but instead of doing this... It will go to stage two, and it will start that one. So, okay. And then stage two is going to continue playing this sound block. Play. And then it is going to start... Um, yeah, it's going to restart itself. Okay. And then we go back to the sensor. Sensor left. Okay, so this may not be enjoyable for some. If it is, let me know. If you don't want to see this kind of stuff ever again, let me know. Okay, so this time, when we get into range, it's going to do still that thing. I probably could have left that. It's going to trigger now, though, instead of start. And then, when it gets out of range, it's going to stop you. Stage 2. And then I think I just got to change timer block time to there we could probably put it back up to two seconds so it kind of sounds like it's playing too quickly okay now we back away now we fly into the asteroid so that's better it's got a little bit of delay in there it's not like continually going it gets set off more immediate so you know you're getting too close to the asteroid. Okay. I think I like it. So it looks like we need to find some more room for some power. Unless he's just got some empty reactors. Now he's got two empty reactors. It's probably the ones in the back that don't have access. So I think maybe if I... Let's steal some uranium from one of the reactors. Okay. Uh, let's take 0.25 from you, and we'll take 0.25 from you, we'll get some more later, and put 0.25, I should have um, kept them separate, and in you, okay, there we go, Tortwing, how are you doing now, do you have enough power, he's a lot quicker now that we got rid of some of that um, gyro weight, now he might... Yeah, we can overload him if he's, like, spinning and dampening and stuff. So we might need to try to find some room for some more power. I think that's probably doable. All right, everybody. Well, was there anything else we didn't do for Tortwing? Um, I think that's about it. So we'll revisit this. So, yeah, that's what that um, space is back here. So most of this area is going to be occupied by the storage. So I don't know if we have room to tuck anything else back here. Uh, we can wait and see. Um, beneath this is where we're going to start seeing our our thrusters. So I want it there to be a buffer as well. So if this is the bottom or as far down as our cargo container goes, 
I mean, we might be able to go one more. Not sure. However far down, I think, like, that's probably as low as we would ever want to go, and that might be too low. So as far down as we go, I'm probably going to keep one air gap, and then I'm going to have probably a double layer of heavy armor. And this is kind of to add protection to these cargo containers in case we ever crash into something. I want there to be a lot of... Um, a lot of strength, I guess, or a lot of um, armor here to protect those cargo containers. And then on the bottom of this is where we'd start laying out the thrusters. So we'd have... I'm going to think we're going to try to do a mixture of small and large. And might try to do, as someone had mentioned, try to get them like in an octagon shape. But yeah, essentially there'd be a thruster maybe there. At least that would be as, as high as it would be. Or wherever we think the thruster should be. It might... We might want the thruster to be higher, in which case we'll probably get rid of one of these and push this up. So when it comes down to it, I don't know if we're going to have a lot of space in this corner area. So I know a lot of you have been suggesting like things that we could do in this space because it looks pretty empty right now. Uh, but it's mostly empty just because we don't need it yet, but there are still kind of loose plans for it. So, um, uh, let's see here. So yeah. So that's kind of why we got these upper platforms. And I kind of want to keep the ship spacious. That's the kind of the idea is this big, large, spacious thing that you could just... You could fly around in, even, like in a ship. Like, we could be in Tortwing when this thing is all said and done, and we could fly around in him fairly easily, or we should be able to. And I hope that's the plan, and we might make some more maneuverable ships just to do that for cruising around from one location to the next. So, uh, yeah, that's why we're going to keep it, um, keep it so roomy. And that's why a lot of the space is going to be air. But that's kind of the idea. Alright. So guys, that's going to do it for today. Bit more work with Tortwing. Didn't get back to the auto grinder cooker thing. But I'll give you guys a bit more time uh, for those that haven't seen that episode yet. As, as of recording this, there's not too much feedback. So I don't want to progress too far with it just yet. And yeah, we'll test this theory out. If we can grind... And we'll probably try to lay this out a little bit better. So with this that I have, uh, this is the beams. So our floor would be roughly here. And maybe we'll make it three thick just for convenience sake. So if we do want to hide something in it, we can. So it'll be three thick. And it'll probably just be a slab. But it might not be everywhere. It might just be where we need it. So we might have some floor there, and then air, and then a floor. I don't know. It won't necessarily be one giant slab, but it might be. We could do like an octagon shape. Just one giant octagon slab, three thick. So anyway, um, if this is the way it's going to be, we're going to want to base this location off of that height. So we'll probably raise this connector at least up to here somewhere. And we'll probably actually push it back as far back as we can because above these storage containers I don't have any plans for. Um, so that might be where we could put some reactors as well. If we want to have some large reactors in various locations so we could have like one main power area. But then we can have some um, locational power areas as well. So a large reactor in each corner plus maybe some in the middle I could do. Uh, for now, I've just been snacking these little ones, and I actually like this. So currently, the ones on top have less uranium in them. So if I bring up the reactors, these have 4, these have 15. So what ends up happening is these ones on top end up running out of uranium, and these lights turn off, and it turns red. So then I know I haven't completely run out of power. I still have these four going. So when that happens, I activate our little timer setup. And I tell those guys to pull in some more uranium. And these guys turn green again. So that way I don't need to constantly micromanage it. But it still gives me a visual indication. I still have control over my uranium usage. So these things aren't just siphoning the uranium. Or one isn't taking it all and stuff like that. So anyway, uh, that'll do guys. I think. Yeah. I'm probably going to equip Tortwing with some grinders and rip out this stuff. Uh, between now and the next episode. And might lay out some of the floor. I don't know. Might play around more with this area. And I'll probably weld up this. So maybe next episode. We either get back to this thing. 
or we try relocating this catwalk and maybe trying to figure out what we want to do with it. So I'm still trying to figure out, like we're going to come around here, come over here, and then find a way up. I don't think we'll do that anymore. And I also blocked it. I kind of want to do what someone had mentioned, is mess around with some gravity. So instead of keeping this being down all the time, we could just have the path veer off and you go... <laughs> I found the one hole. Um, you go this way all of a sudden. So we could walk over here and then the gravity shifts and all of a sudden we're walking on the wall. And then the gravity shifts again. This is hard to represent. Okay. So we could be like that. And we could head up to the top area via just some weird gravity pathway. Or we could end up being on the ceiling back here. But I don't know. It's tough. It would probably be tough to get the gravity working just right. We'd have a lot of overlaps and probably a lot of power usage to get it done. But we could look at something like that. Alternatively, I was thinking about turning this. So we'd move it. And then we'd chop it. So it would go up maybe two sections. One, two, three. <laughs> maybe three. And then it would turn, and it would go this way. It would be a flat bit. So there'd be a 3x3 three three platform. And then we'd go diagonally up this way. And then shift over, and then diagonally up to the flooring. Or something. I'm not sure. Or we could double back just here, and then head up diagonally this way. I don't know why I said it like that. Diagonally. Diagonally. Octonagonal! Octonagonal! Um, we could go up that way. And then we just have it meet up back in the middle, and we have a walkway that goes down the middle again. Anyway, uh, I'm just yakking now and wasting your time, or just spitballing some ideas. But those are the thoughts that are going through my head at the moment, in case you wanted to know. And if you didn't, I'm sorry. I'm still not sure. Glass or no glass? I still like both. I'll just wait until... Until I don't like both anymore. And I only like one. Alright guys, take it easy. See you next time. Totwing? Totwing! That's an easy solution. There he is. Totwing duck. Alright. <laughs>